New week, new, uh, news. Yeah, so, okay, admittedly, that intro could have gone a little bit better. You know what? It's all in the past now, right? Either way, we have another brand new, exciting week packed with news. We've had new MMOs announced. We have new games actually launching this week and just lots to talk about. I hope you guys are well prepared. While I do have your guys' attention though, I do want to preface this entire video with two things real quick if you guys have a spare moment. First, we have an MMORPG giveaway going on where you can win any MMO you want. Wow, Shadowlands, Final Final Fantasy 14, Shadowbringers, Guild Wars 2 expansions, ESO, Black Desert. Participating is easy. All you got to do is click that link down in the description of the pinned comment below. And you can win any of these games completely free. Second, we're going to be streaming in just a few hours from this video going live over on our Twitch channel. You know, if you want to come on over and join us and become part of the next video we do. We stream every Tuesday, every Saturday, and every Sunday at 3 p.m. EST over on twitch.tv forward slash MMObyte. Quick note, Mrs. Sticks is actually going to be streaming Genshin Impact over on our Twitch channel tomorrow if you guys are interested in checking that game out before you go ahead and play it. Otherwise, we have plenty to talk about, so let's just go right ahead and jump into this week's weekly bite of MMORPG news. Let's start this off with something big first, yeah? So, a brand new Kickstarter-backed MMORPG is in development, Wagadu Chronicles. But before you instantly shut this game down, I wanna clarify that while they've already met their goal of $116,000, they're not using Kickstarter as the only means with which to fund the development of the game. On the contrary, they are actually also being fully supported financially by Riot Games, the very same company behind League of Legends and Valorant. This is actually very reassuring news as the Kickstarter isn't really necessary and won't likely affect much of the development of the game. While it is currently in a pre-alpha state, they have already completed quite a bit of the game. They're planning to have quite a few features, housing, farming, crafting, and combat with an emphasis on traditional African lore, something that I have actually never seen done before in an MMO. Yeah. Color me impressed and excited to see where this goes. I'll have a much more dedicated look at the game sometime next week for those of you that are interested in something new and actually a little different to what we're used to. For those of you that weren't aware, the upcoming game launches tomorrow, yeah. You can go ahead and preload, pre-download the game in advance and begin playing as soon as it becomes available. I know, I know, we're actually getting a game for once? Yeah, we really are, and it's about damn time too. But with that news comes some worse news as well. If you haven't already, then I did a dedicated video talking about the current ongoing mass bans within China and how it might also carry over and impact the international release of the game as well. But the TLDR of that is in essence that if you have a five star account and you don't play after 24 hours or you access a game via another IP or device, you run the risk of potentially getting banned. While it definitely is not a guarantee, obviously, those actions trigger a flag of their system that could result in the banning of your account. Again, this is for China specifically right now, as that is the only region that the game is released in, and the international version might be different, but it is also worth noting that it might be exactly the same, so proceed with caution. Would you believe it if I told you that Estelia Online was still actually alive and kicking? Because apparently it is. It's been around for an entire year thus far, and they are celebrating that with login rewards for players that opt to remain logged in over a period of the day in addition to a birthday buff that actually increases Zender gain and allows for the free teleportation and resurrection of your character. Otherwise, there really isn't any new content or things to do at Endgame, which is a little bit disappointing for loyal players that remain active, sorry. But for everyone else, now is a solid time to go right ahead and try it out. I know you're all anticipating playing Lost Ark now that Amazon Game Studios have all but confirmed its 2021 release. Unfortunately, this isn't pertaining to the international release specifically, but rather to the new Reaper class that's coming. It was confirmed earlier this week that the brand new class will hit the live servers on Tuesday, September 29th. You can learn more about the class over on the official website, but it's worth noting that the Reaper isn't the only form of new content coming. The Reaper is only a part of the Season 2 content slated for release, which I've already covered in a detailed dedicated video last month, I think? With the recent launch in Japan on the 23rd, we are so close to getting the game over here in North America and Europe as well. 
I am well aware that the live stream for New Genesis was held last night, but I'm doing this video Friday morning, not even half a day after the stream happened without enough time to accurately compile information. So you guys are gonna have to wait until next week for a more dedicated video on that. However, at the same time, the older PSO2 game, the one that everyone is actually playing currently, announced last week that they have an official date scheduled for episode five, next week on September 30th. Episode five brings with it a plethora of new content as every episode tends to, with an expanded level cap, new story, new enemies, new missions, rewards, and more. If you've been holding off on playing, much like Mrs. Stix and I have been, this is a perfect opportunity to jump into or back into the game. We'll have episode 6 to play through shortly after episode 5 as well, so you might want to start on that now so you don't have to play catch up later on. Echo of Soul is... Wait, shutting down again? Didn't it literally just launch onto Steam recently under a separate publisher to Gamego? even though Gamigo publishes the MMO? Well, this is really, really confusing. Either way, the non-Gamigo version of Echo of Soul is shutting down once again after attempting to and potentially even successfully scamming money out of players that bought into the Steam version of the game. And now Gamigo are going to take over. But like, guys, can, can I just ask here? Can we just stop? Honestly, can we stop buying into these re-re-released MMOs that were free to play, but convert to buy to play business models? I'm confused as to how they even had any active players. 11 years is admittedly quite the feat. I'm not gonna lie. Ion has been online for 11 years now, and it doesn't feel like it's been a day over eight. In celebration of 11 years, much like their celebration of 10 years, nine years, and you know, so on, they're holding an event. The event will have tons of things to do that will offer a variety of rewards, like transformation potions, which are always fun, and items to help with leveling and progressing. There are returning dungeons for players to run as well, if those are of interest to you. Happy birthday, Ion. Here's to another 11. I would love to be playing Ion when I'm 40 years old. Hell yeah. Or, you know what, what's even better? The mobile version of it, since you know that's gonna happen. Uh, I kid. Kinda. In shocking news that I actually never saw coming, partly because I don't keep really too up to date with RuneScape and partly because I had saw no mention of it anywhere, RuneScape and old school RuneScape are actually launching onto Steam on Wednesday, October 14th. Well, I mean RuneScape will be. Old school RuneScape will actually be delayed a little into next year, but it is still coming. And with their expansion onto the new platform will come even more players. This comes after the successful launch of RuneScape onto mobile devices, providing substantial growth for the game. Yeah, no kidding. There were a ton of brand new MMO announcements made in the last couple weeks, but here's another one, Titan Reach. Titan Reach is a full loot adventure fantasy MMORPG set in a large open world. Yeah, I did say full loot, meaning that if you're killed out in the world, you drop your gear, you drop your items, maybe your money too, and other players can come along, they can loot your now dead body. But if full loot MMOs are your thing, then you'll be happy to learn that Titan Reach actually has a fully playable demo that you can try out right now. They have plans to take the game in a different direction to most current gen MMOs, but at the same time, we've heard our game will be unique guys at least every other day, right? And now for potentially the most important news of the entire news video. Don't worry though, this is actually isn't the end of the video. We have plenty more to talk about, but I give you Bless Unleashed's PS4 launch date. Yeah, if being an Xbox exclusive wasn't enough, now we get this masterpiece on the PS4 as well. Okay, so jokes aside, as I have noted in the past, the two console ports of the game from Bandai Namco aren't actually as bad as people make them out to be. The PC port of Unleashed by NeoWiz will probably end up being terrible though, but I figured it was worth noting that Bless Unleashed is actually launching onto PS4 next month, October 22nd specifically. So for those of you that don't own an Xbox and you want it to play, this is definitely your opportunity to. Trust me, it'll be far more worth it than the PC version by NeoWiz or the Bless Eternal mobile MMO. I'd actually never heard about this until it was actually sent to me, but there's apparently a brand new upcoming pixel art MMORPG called Naika, and it actually looks kinda cool. It has a very unique aesthetic look and feel to it, something that you don't really see done in today's age of gaming, especially with regards to PC MMOs. For players interested, the game is going into complete open beta on November 10th, 2020, 
so players will be able to jump into the game and take it for a test run. You know, see how it fares, if it's worth looking at, or if it's just another crappy cross-platform MMO. I'll be keeping an eye on it and might go as far as actually doing a dedicated video on it as well if I like how it looks. Mysistix actually made a tweet about this earlier this week, but the brand new update for Blade & Soul Cosmic Horizon went live just a couple days ago, and with it came a brand new class, the Astromancer. And yeah, she actually covered this news several days before I covered this news. Maybe you guys should be following her on Twitter, not me. Now, I didn't even know that this was coming. I have not been keeping up to date with Blade & Soul, but unfortunately, the class is exclusive to the Lin race, which I fear is already one of the lesser played races in the game as is. The update brings a lot more with it though. New story, new harder difficulties of dungeons, items, alterations to already existing items, about what you'd expect from an update. Honestly, I was hoping that other races had access to the brand new Astromancer class, but it is what it is. I tend to, for the most part, keep mobile games out of the news videos because they're not really worth mentioning, and I do a dedicated monthly news segment over on our MMO by Mobile channel anyway, but I felt the need to let you guys know that Icarus M, the mobile port of Riders of Icarus, actually just launched earlier this week. I mean, I, wait, no, last week? Last month? This month? Crap, I, I, I'm pretty sure it came out this month. I don't know, I'm just, I'm pulling a blank right now. And I, you know what? I mean, it looked good graphically, but it turned out to be more or less what you'd expect out of the game. But for those of you that have been waiting on this, now is your chance to jump on in. And finally, Blue Protocol. I know there are thousands of you that look forward to this segment each week, so here I am, ready to provide you with your monthly dose of Blue Protocol related news. The Bandai Namco Blue Protocol team recently held a wave of interviews with Japanese news outlets and they covered quite a few different topics. I have a dedicated video done on that last week if you wanna go ahead and you wanna check that out. But this is new news. This is news that nobody has really covered yet, and that is a further extension to the character customization system. The official Blue Protocol Twitter account released video footage of the new gradient hair colors, new options to customize the look of your character, and they look pretty damn good. Unfortunately, other than the interview news and the new character customization news, we really don't have anything else to talk about. And that is pretty much it. That is all of the MMO related news that has been brought to my attention over the course of the last two weeks. If you think there's anything that I forgot, anything that I missed, you can go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. You can DM me on Discord, you can DM me on Twitter, you can DM me on Instagram or literally anywhere you can find me and include a link to the thread so I can read through it. And if applicable, I can go ahead and include it in a follow-up news video or heck, I can even do a dedicated video on it. Anyway guys, that is it for me. Thank Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. I, I messed up the wave thing too, but you know what? I don't think there's anyone even watching up until this point of the video. If, if you watched my failed wave, let me know down in the comments. So I know to, you know, in the future, make sure not to, to failed wave. Yeah. This was an awkward outro. This, you know what? We had an awkward intro. We had an awkward outro. Today's not really shaping up to be that good for me. But hopefully your guys' day is doing better. So